OMG guys. The green player captured both of the Americas and holding them for multiple turns. We are all screwed up. Not in a game of mine though. We teamed up and took him out quickly. That's what I call the proper team efforts to take the strongest player out. Welcome to the Risk Forever channel guys. My name is Champion Ever. And today we are going to review one of my games. Let's get it started guys. Today we are playing 4 players fixed cards game on classic Risk map. Time per turn is 60 seconds. Time in fixed cards is not that much important as in progressive cards, however sometimes there are situations when you need to think and act really fast, especially when it comes to the endgame. And it can be very crucial. This time I'm playing against one intermediate rank player who is yellow, and two beginner rank players who are green and blue. It's always a challenge to play against lower rank players. Most of them are very aggressive and attack you a lot. So it can be a struggle to hold the continent. But let's see how the game is going to go this time. As always, wish me best of luck guys. I will need it. Keep your fingers crossed for me. So, as you can see, I decided to go for Australia this time. I'm the player who got to make a turn first. So I added my troops to Australia, clearly showing that I'm going for this continent. And I was actually amazed that none of the players added some troops into it as well. Usually the lower rank players are obsessed to get Australia at any cost. Even though they could easily go for other continent. A lot of them imagine that no Australia equals to no win. But these players, I'm currently playing with, seem to be smart. Nobody of them will fight for the continent with me. And that's really great. But to be honest I'm just not so really sure about the yellow player. What are his plans, and what is he planning to do? What is the purpose to have multiple smaller armies in Asia? Don't say he is going for it. No, I don't think so. To be honest he is the reason why I'm taking to capture Australia so long. Maybe he was hoping that I would clear Australia for him, so he would have captured it easily. Or maybe not. Who knows. But in any case I decided that it was the best decision to capture Australia right now, especially when the blue player expands himself so much and craving for more. I didn't want that he would have turned in a set and added some troops over here, and maybe even swiping me out. Also you probably noticed that I blocked my troops in Australia, in Indonesia territory, instead of putting them to Siam territory, this is because I didn't want to appear as a threat to the yellow player, in one or another way. But as you can see right now, he is not dangerous for me anymore. Put his troops to North America, or in the other words, far, far away from me. But also he added some troops to Europe. And that is so, so strange. I mean the fact that he is trying to spread himself out through all of the map. Of course, it would be good in progressive cards, as it makes you harder to be taken out. But in fixed cards there's no benefit at all of doing so. Differently, by spreading himself out, yellow just making himself so much easier to be taken out. As he won't have any continent to get troops from, or any big army which would be considered not worth to be taken down. OMG guys. That was unexpected at all. I didn't see that coming guys. The least I expected. I was expecting for a little bit, that yellow might transfer his troops somehow to Europe and will go for it. I had some thoughts that he might invade South America, but I didn't think he will capture it all. And lolalol. The blue player even if he could, didn't even consider to invade yellow into the continent at all. Any other lower rank player would have invaded him back. Is Blue not mad at all that Yellow took the continent from him? Hmm. I'm sure he is. But I'm pretty sure he was scared of Yellow's armies in Europe so drastically much. And to be honest, the Blue player made a good decision by not invading the Yellow player back. When you're so weak like Blue, you should be trying to avoid any possible conflict at any cost. You do not want to be taken out early. Who would like to? Blue's turn. He will turn in a set. Maybe he will attack yellow now? 
he got only six troops unfortunately for him. And the blue player is doing the right decision by not attacking yellow. Because if they would start to fight then the green player would be taking an advantage from all of it. Green captured North America, and it even gives five additional troops to him, and I would be only getting two for Australia, while in the meantime blue and yellow would be destroying each other. The game wouldn't be balanced and that's bad. Alright guys. The green player is expanding and capturing South America. I hope these players won't let him to hold both of the Americas. If green holds them both for multiple turns, he will basically win the game. Unless the yellow player captures Europe, that would balance the game. The quite significant advantage of holding both of the Americas, is that you're getting so much troops every turn, and you only need to defend three borders. So let's hope that one of the players will invade him. I'm pretty sure that yellow player is mad and will try to invade North America, at the same time capturing Europe. That would be sweet. Green player's turn. He added some troops to Brazil and Iceland territories. It seems he is quite more scared of blue rather than yellow. The yellow player could easily invade him, especially if yellow turns in a set next turn. Let's see how it goes. I would really like to hope so. Come on yellow. Well, but on the other hand I understand why he didn't invade North America. Cause it would pretty much destroy himself and he would be in a risk to be taken out soon. And even though he would capture Europe, he would not be guaranteed to hold it whatsoever. So I have a plan guys. If other players don't want or can't invade green, well I'm going to do it by myself. Boom. Suck it up green. You didn't expect that, did you? Before attacking green, I hoped that either blue or yellow would attack him. I gave them even two turns since none of them attacked. I decided to do it by myself, I couldn't wait any longer. Until there would be a way too late. Why to wait for multiple turns when he will become so strong while I could simply to attack him now? The sooner the better guys. I lost some good amount of troops cause green attacked that army I put into North America, but I do not care too much about the troops I lost. The most important thing that I'm helping to sustain the balance of the game. And OMG guys. I attacked green into North America, the yellow player swiped him out from Europe. But I would had never ever been expected for blue to attack South America. Wow, I still cannot believe it guys. That's what I call the proper team efforts to take the strongest player out. Will yellow player finish him off? It seems he won't. He invaded North America though. But Blue definitely will. Four extra cards for him. Rest in peace Green. Your time is up. You can't see Blue. His time is now. Goodbye Green. One player down, two left. Who will take an advantage? Hmm. We will see about that. For now I'm just going to use Australian Turtle strategy. I will just camp in Australia and won't attack any of the players. I will be neutral. The yellow player captured Europe, and the blue player Africa plus South America. They're getting pretty much the same amount of troops, so the game is balanced. I don't want to unbalanced it by attacking one of them. Plus why would I like to get an additional enemy? These players are great powers, so they will have to deal with each other. And I'm like a third world country watching the conflict from the side. Eventually they will definitely attack each other. So who will be the first player to start the conflict? This is the question I'm mostly wondering about. Come on yellow. I know that you want to attack blue. Sweet. Finally. The moment I have been waiting for. The conflict has been started. Blue is thinking what to do. Come on blue attack yellow into Europe. No mercy. Destroy him. Shoot, apparently blue is a pacifist. Will yellow attack him again though? Let's see. And by the way, for those who aren't familiar with my channel yet. My name is Champion Ever. And in this channel I'm sharing relevant risk global domination tips and tricks that will help you to increase your rank in no time. I upload my videos constantly, 
I try to make them short and informative but also entertaining at the same time. I'm currently Grandmaster and have over 1000 hours of experience which I want to share with you. Most people want to know how to win at risk. Are you one of them? If so, then what are you waiting for? Subscribe and start gaining those rank points right now. Alright guys. I thought that conflict between yellow and blue had been started, but apparently I was wrong. They don't even attack each other besides a bunch of ones. Wait. That's what I'm talking about yellow. Good job. That's my boy. Keep it going. Destroy that pacifistic blue. Nice. The blue player have had finally enough of all of it. Well done blue. I believe in you. Destroy that lethal aggressor yellow. Regain what's yours. No one will command you. You're the chosen one to destroy that intimidating yellow. Guys, I'm pretty sure the yellow player is mad. So, do you know what is he going to do? That's right. He will crush blue, invade all of his continents. I am enjoying my situation so much guys. Words cannot describe that. What can be better than sitting in Australia watching the world burn? This is Australia's strategy I have been using. Works 100% of times. And oh wow guys, I didn't expect that they crush themselves that much. They probably don't even realize that I have the same amount of troops as both of them combined. So do you know what it means? That's right. I can take both of them out. The only problem is that both of my armies are blocked. Well, that's actually not problem at all. Going to fortify the biggest one of them. Problem solved. Like look guys, I have 95 troops, when they only have 38 and 34 respectively, or 72 if we count in total. Plus keep in mind that we are playing with balance blitz. So I, as an attacker will have a tremendous advantage while blitzing their armies. Wow, I fortified my army and they are still are keep attacking each other. Not afraid of me at all. Well, if they destroy each other, when it will even be better for me. They will make my job easier. So let's see what they do. Yellow's turn. Just recaptures South America without invading blue into Africa. Blue's turn. Savage. Blue listen. I will give you advice of a life. Don't you never ever poke the bear. Anyways, let's just finish this for good. The yellow player has a way less territories than blue, so I will take him out firstly. I won't have any problems finishing the blue player as well. To be honest I made a mistake by not taking them out in the last turn. The yellow player had even 4 cards which he turned in this turn, so now I only got one. Plus I needed to destroy some extra troops. Also if I had taken yellow in the last turn that would have been enough to finish the blue player as well. As after taking yellow out, and getting his 4 cards, I would have had over 5 cards, so I would have forced to turn in a set, and the timer would have been resident by 30 seconds, 